Right. Usually, if in my opinion, if you're from the LPL or LCK and a good team qualifies, you essentially are almost obligated to make the case that your team should win the tournament yeah. because like it's the teams you watch. And also, like if people don't realize, one of the reasons why people always get called homers in their regions is they look at the best game that that team had and then they envision what if that happened. Like one thing I've always thought it's kind of whack about League of Legends, sadly, it's because teams play each other so rarely internationally. People really do take whatever the result is and they're like, well, that was the only, that was 100% chance that that would happen like that. You know, it's like, no, like... Who knows how these things go? I mean, the obvious example would be top esports in the last worlds. Like, there's a million other ways that tournament could have gone. So my question is this, right? It sounded when you gave that answer, like you can see ways in which like damn one is going to be a hard matchup for RNG. Do you actually think RNG is the best team in this tournament? Like, will you kind of like stand behind that? Obviously, you're not a fool if you say it. Like, I think it's pretty debatable. It's a one A, one B to me. So I've actually been watching Damwon one all day today. And I was like super all in on Damwon one being the best team until I like really deep dove on them for playoffs. <laughs> and I think the, the biggest problem that I have with Damwon one is like whatever about the matchups, all right? Um, I 100% think that like Showmaker and Canyon are the best in their position at this tournament and Canyon is best jungler in the world. Um, the bigger issue that I have with Damwon one is more so the way they set up side lanes for objectives. Like basically every single one of their playoff games that i watched it was just like all right cool we're 50 seconds until dragon just a ram we're all just gonna jump in mid screw the side lanes no one cares about it and i think for a team like rng who are super smart about the way they set up these side lanes um and are willing to you know ditch third dragon so then they can go and get a bunch of towers that is going to net them a whole bunch more in the future i think that's really where damn one need to try and set themselves up better um and i definitely think in this respect that uh just on a side note, Ming is like the best support in the world right now. And I think if you end up taking him into the bot lane matchup, I think if you've got help coming through from Wei, they can definitely do damage to, to Ghost and Beryl, who I think have looked weaker, a lot weaker than they did in 2020. Um, and if not, again, we already talked about how he's just, he's better than Beryl at using the, the tempo timings that he has, where if you've got this like moment where you're able to shove in bot, you'll see Ming is like smart enough to go, right, we're actually able to recall here and we, our AD carry is going to be safe. I've got time on the map now that I can use for the next 20 to 30 seconds. And I think that's the hardest part for Beryl. It seems like he's almost nervous to leave Ghost in the bot lane by himself and just stays around that little bit too long. So those windows that he would have to actually make a bigger impact don't really get used. It's so curious, isn't it, the way that that's the way, like League of Legends changed because support <laughs> became so relevant to like having to form all the vision and roam, etc. Because in the early days, if people don't know, if you had to pick a weaker player for the bot lane, you'd of course pick the support. You're like, the support just basically does what he's told, he's just a ward bot. You want the star to be the AD carry, but as we've actually seen in many, many teams, you can go all around the world and see this. I think actually, if you had to pick between the two, you can get a lot done with like a rookie AD carry and an amazing support player. I mean, you can even look at NA, like that was basically what Core JJ does with Tactical, like the whole bunch of teams that work that way so to me it just shows how like the game has definitely evolved in the last 10 years yeah absolutely um I, I i think it just helps because all of the changes that were made to the support position basically enabled them to have the tankiness and mobility in order to make plays on the map which probably wouldn't have been possible before right when they were spending most of their income on uh, either seeing wards or putting wards down on the map, uh, depending on when Oracle's Elixir actually was the thing. Um, I'm curious what you think about, you, you just made a, a claim that Ming, you think, is the best support in the world. And I think Thorin's point earlier, where we hadn't seen very many Senna games, if, there is a, if there's a world where the AD, key, AD carry champion pool gets very heavily pinched, right? Um and they're, you know, they need to go to Senna. And you would think that Ming, if he is the best support in the world, would be able to, to play a, a farming support alongside a fasting Senna, right? In order to have a big impact. Because the, the support metagame has gotten so diverse that you need a lot of different skills. And we've seen Domwon play the fasting Senna quite a bit uh, over the course of this year. Do you think that that might be a way that Domwon can really push this or do you think this will be an easy adjustment to make if they find that at the international level they need to at least have the flexibility to play into the fasting center style yeah i i think they'll be relatively okay uh, personally i think that what we're actually going to see is a swap over towards like the viruses and ash in the the ad carry role i think we're going to see a lot of utility and engage coming through from there um which i still think would be fine for gallon don't you think that like that's better for Don Juan though overall like because if i had to pick a, a meta that i would have felt more comfortable for ghost and barrel it would definitely be like ash varus senna these kind of roles yeah fair i mean i can 100 percent see that and um, i think the the bigger problem that i'm seeing for ghost and barrel is just the the weakness of their laning phase in a lot of situations 
Um, it's like Ghost specifically is taking that step too far forward. He's trying to auto attack minions that aren't really going to die, and he gets caught out for it. Or he's just not ex um, expecting people to be sitting in a brush. He's uh, I think there's a lot of opportunity still to punish them there. And although I do agree when we get towards like team fights and stuff like that, because I think Canyon is like 25% of the team's damage or something insane. Like he's a huge <laughs> That's so crazy. Of damage. Um, <laughs> but I think the biggest thing is more so that like, I, I, I see where you're coming from, but I think it's still going to be punishable. And then from that point, if we do end up seeing like Damon going back towards the, the Fast and Senna, I think they are quite strong on it. But the problem that I have is whenever I see it come out, um, Ghost doesn't ward very well. The difference is whenever we see Barrel come out, like Barrel's thought process is, oh yeah, cool, I've got to go and link with Canyon, we're going to get vision control down and get it all set up for objectives. His head just isn't really there for vision. And there's a lot of times where they're moving in towards objectives and you see the Senna and it's like, oh, I'm not actually like moving in to get the vision that I need. And suddenly there's a guy in a brush that really should have been warded like 20 seconds ago and he ends up getting the engage off that we need. And I think that's the, the bigger problem that I see with the Senna. And as I was coming back towards, like, the objective setup for RNG, they will, like, come in, like, two minutes, they reset, get deep vision down, second reset before dragons and stuff like this. When you've got this cover of deep vision that they love to use the TPs for, if you are not warding correctly, I feel like that's just RNG's day. What, what a time to be alive where the LPL teams are setting up for objectives and warding correctly and the Korean team is just clustering around an objective trying to team fight. Yeah, it's a bit Never of a weird thought I'd be thing. here. Yeah. <laughs>